So it's a little bit of Nick here today. I'm here to help you decide which DAW to buy. It doesn't matter which DAW you choose. Just pick one and stick with it. All right, sweet. I get it. Like so many people say that, but how do you just choose one? September 6th, 2016 at 1.24 a.m. That's when I bought my first doll. I pretty much spent most of the time in August, which is the month before I bought it, researching about which doll to buy. So many people will say, you just choose one, there's no best, they're all good, you just have to pick one and learn it. All right, sweet, I get it. But I'm here dropping 500 bucks on a piece of software. I don't wanna be spending $600 buying Cubase and deciding that I wanna get Pro Tools three months down the line. So I wanna share with you guys how I decided on one DAW. The DAW that I chose may not be right for you and the DAW you chose may not be right for me. But these are little things that I considered when I decided to buy Ableton Live. Okay, so here's the big secret, all right? You rule out the ones that you don't vibe with. There you go, I said it, that's the secret right there. So here are the main options that you have when you're buying a DAW. The first one is obviously Ableton Live, that's the one that I got. Other very popular ones are Avid's Pro Tools. Steinberg's Cubase, Propellerhead's Reason, PreSonus has Studio One, Apple's Logic Pro, FL Studio, Reaper by someone. Reaper is actually Kukos, 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 Kukos created Reaper. I, I didn't know that. So after spending an insane amount of hours on forums and YouTube, here's a few key points that I found for each DAW. Ableton Live's strong spot is for DJing, live music, and also creating music. But a lot of people seem to complain about the sound, that sound engine isn't as good, but to be honest, don't even worry about it. That very, very, very slight possible decrease in audio quality compared to other DAWs is just ridiculous. Because if a pro mixes on any DAW, it's probably gonna sound better than the best DAW for you. That, that came out wrong. If a pro makes a song in Ableton Live and an amateur makes a song in Logic, the song in Ableton Live is still gonna sound a lot better. Don't even worry about it, Ableton sounds fine. The way it's laid out, it really helps creativity and how it really helps you make songs. Creating new content using MIDI is probably Ableton's strongest point. So Logic Pro is very affordable compared to its competitors. The one caveat is that it's only for Mac. So if you are a Windows user, unfortunately you can't use Logic Pro. However, the stock virtual instruments in Logic Pro sounds amazing, if not the best, compared to its competitors. There's also Studio One, and the artist version actually comes free with PreSonus's audio interfaces. So if you don't have a sound card and you're looking to buy a DAW, PreSonus is a great way to get started because you get two for the price of one, pretty much. People seem to like their scratch pad feature. I don't know exactly what it does, but people seem to really like it. So it's gonna be worth taking a look at that. So Reason comes as a suite for a lot of virtual instruments and the way it's laid out, it imitates the analog gear as far as I understand. So if you're used to using an analog console, this is gonna feel right at home for you. But it may be hard for those of you who's just starting out to learn how to use it. And as far as I know, I think you can use Reason as a suite of plugins within other DAWs. So you can use Reason within Ableton, for example. I'm not too sure, but I think that's true. Alright, Pro Tools is like the biggest DAW you can find. It's the industry standard, and if you're going to be working in the business, you should probably learn this. Everybody says this, and I agree. 
I was looking for job openings for audio engineering in Tokyo, and they all required the skill to use Pro Tools. So, if you want to get a job doing this, consider using Pro Tools. I think Pro Tools is great for tracking live instruments, and also pretty much every professional mixing engineer or mastering engineer uses Pro Tools to mix and master. So, if that's your thing, Pro Tools is going to be a great choice. So Cubase is a solid DAW that a lot of people seem to like and a lot of followers swear by Cubase. And Cubase was actually released for Apple's Macintosh in 1990. So that's 27 years ago. I think it looks really cool. Uh, I know it's very reliable and people love it, but I don't really know much about it. Reaper is for sure gonna be your best budget DAW. You can buy the non-commercial license for 60 bucks or something like that. And the commercial license is a little bit over $200, which is easily the cheapest DAW you can find. And you get all the features and it's a solid, powerful DAW. So if you're in a budget and you don't mind kind of a compromised, and you don't mind the slight compromised user interface, then I definitely recommend this one for you. FL Studio is definitely one of the most popular DAWs out there for bedroom producers. You can find so many tutorials on YouTube. If you buy it, you can pretty much learn anything on it. It's a great choice. It's only for Windows, so if you're on a Mac, unfortunately you can't get it. But it's a solid choice if you have Windows, and you can't go wrong with Fruity Loops. Not Fruity Loops, FL Studio. It's not called Fruity Loops anymore. I'm just old, I guess. Not really, I'm not that old. And Sonar. Sonar is good, I think. <laughs> I really don't know anything about Sonar, I'm sorry. I know it's for Windows only. I know the people who do use it, they very much enjoy it, but... I have nothing to say. I, I'm, I guess they're good. Remember that. Alright, so that's just the general gist of each DAW. Some people might disagree with what I have to say, some people might say I'm leaving out some important key information, which I'm sure I am. I recommend actually doing the research for yourself. With all of this in mind, I ruled out FL Studio and Sonar because I use a MacBook Pro, so I can't buy Fruity Loops or Sonar. I also ruled out Logic Pro because I actually have a Windows desktop back in Canada. I actually currently live in Japan as a side note. I was looking for software that's cross compatible with Windows and Mac OS. So at this point my options are Pro Tools, Cubase, Reason, Reaper, and Ableton. The first one I tried out was Reaper because if I can get everything done with 60 bucks, I can use that money towards gear and that would have been the best decision for me. However, when I opened up Reaper, it did not seem like it was optimized for retina display, which is what my MacBook uses. So it did not look very good. And I tried recording some things on it. I just didn't vibe with it. So I just said, no, I'm not gonna use this. I can't be using this for the next five, 10 years. So I'm ruling out Reaper. Then I installed Pro Tools first, which is the free version of Pro Tools. So there were some things that I didn't really like about Pro Tools. The first thing was that I had to create an iLock account to install Pro Tools and also it installs a bunch of drivers and it's not a bad thing by any means you know like I understand why they're doing it but uh, I didn't like it personally for my purposes just the look didn't inspire me I couldn't get myself to make songs with it I'm sorry Pro Tools you're not the one for me. And unfortunately, I felt the exact same way about Cubase and Studio One. I just tried them out, I tried making songs with it, I just didn't vibe with it. I couldn't see myself using it every day for the next year, two years, three years, four years. So that's why I ruled out Pro Tools, Cubase, and Studio One. I really wanted to like Reason because I knew a lot of the great hip hop producers use Reason to make their songs. The idea of Reason just seemed cool to me, so I wanted to try out, but 
I've seen some videos, tutorial videos on Reason, but it was a little bit too confusing for me at the time. I could probably get into it now and work around with it, but at the time with no prior knowledge, it was really confusing for me. I'm very stupid by the way, so keep that in mind. If you're very smart, you might be able to get by with it. My biggest tip is to just try it out. I tried it out, it didn't work for me, so that's why I ruled it out as well. So I installed Ableton Live Lite, and on Ableton's website they have these tutorials for basic usage, and I had watched those videos from start to finish, and I tried making a song and it just clicked with me. It's not that there's special tricks to it that helps you make songs, it just I just vibed with it, you know, it's just a gut feeling thing, I just liked it. So I tried out their Ableton Live Suite, their 30 day trial because that's what they have and I used it for maybe about two weeks or so, I kept making songs with it and I just loved it. So that's when September 6th, 1.24 AM, I made the purchase, middle of the night, I remember. And just a little side note, if you're trying to decide between the intro, standard, and sweet, I did another video where I explain my thoughts on which one to get. And it seemed to help out a few people, so definitely check that out if you're trying to make that decision. And now that seven months has passed since I bought it, honestly, all I can say is that I love it. I don't regret the purchase a single bit. My only slight gripe with it and I don't even want to say it's a great. I don't like the electric piano emulation in Ableton Live and I couldn't find any good organ sounds for Ableton Live so I got third-party plugins for those. So those two things I would wish was in Suite already but hey, you can't ask for everything and honestly I have nothing to complain about. I really enjoy the purchase. Will Ableton Live be the best option for you? I'm not sure and I can't say that it will be. But what I can say is that I tried each DAW and I don't feel like I'm missing out. I would recommend to you to try each and every one. There's a demo on each site. And honestly, just speaking between you and me, if there's no demo, I wouldn't even consider buying it. When you buy a guitar, you try it out at the store first. It's the same with the DAW. You try it out first, if you like it, you keep it. If you don't like it, you rule it out. So definitely if you decide on one, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to know what you got. And if this helped you out, leave a thumbs up or subscribe. And man, I hope you enjoy your new purchase. I'll catch you guys later. Have a nice day or night or morning or whatever you're having. Take care, bye.